dear students today we will study about the performance of a solar grid connected PV system. The performance analysis of a grid connected PV system is very very essential to determine the potential for PV power production in a location. Usually the performance of a solar power plant is investigated under standard test condition which is not always representative for the real time operation. Also the performance of a solar grid connected PV system depends on module technology, incident radiation, temperatures, inclination, inverter efficiency, then control systems, sun tracking systems and wearings. In particular, if we have to talk about uh, performance analysis, these are the parameters which influences the performance of a grid connected PV system. Namely, annual energy yield, reference yield, array yield, then system losses, cell temperature losses, performance ratio, capacity utilization factor, average plant efficiency. The analysis that means the performance analysis provides the useful information to policy makers and interested individual and organization about actual performance of a grid connected PV system in a region or a country. The energy output of PV array is affected by many of the parameters namely average solar radiation data which includes tilt angle and orientation, manufacturing tolerances of modules, temperature effect on the modules, then effects of dart on the modules, system losses, it may be power cable losses which includes DC cable and AC cable losses, inverter efficiency, then module efficiency. In nutshell, the PV power plant looks something like this. We have solar radiation where electromagnetic radiation comes and falls on the solar PV panel. The output of the solar PV panel is DC, this is direct current, right. Then we need some kind of cabling to the inverter. So, what is the function of inverter? It will convert this DC power to the AC power, right. So, once we convert this, then we can have AC cable if we have AC load or we can give it to the grid through this net metering system. This net meter will count the amount of energy we are giving to the grid and amount of energy we are taking from the grid during the off peak period of the sun. Okay? So, when we are estimating the energy output of the PV array, we are really interested about the energy at this point and also we have to find out the losses associated with this cable and then the amount of energy we are getting here at this point is not the same amount of energy is available at this point. Some amount of losses will be there in the inverter, right. Again this cable also is not 100 percent efficient. So, it has got some inefficiencies. So, that also we need to count. Of course, this AC cable is having higher efficiencies close to 99 percent 
than DC cables. DC cables may be about 97 percent efficiency, right. So, while designing a power plant, we need to find out the all the aspects of losses and at the amount of energy we need at the end. So, we will solve one running problem and also we will discuss why these losses are taking place at different stages in the coming slides. So, we will be now more interested about the performance analysis of the plant. So, for this we need to know some of the mathematical expression. Okay? So, as I said before this is solar panels. So, here we need some amount of calculation because the amount of energy generated by these PV modules we need to know here then only we can go step by step for calculation of energy really we are delivering to the grid. right? So, first thing what we need to know the mathematical expression to find out the instantaneous power output of the AC side say for example, this is the AC side. The instantaneous power output on the AC side is given by P A C this is module area then I is the instantaneous solar insulation I can like M as well module efficiency then inverter efficiency if we install MPPT MPPT efficiency also we need to consider then other efficiencies. So, this other efficiency includes the all the losses associated with cables. Okay? Now, if we are interested about the system efficiency we can write system efficiency is equal to P A C to the total area of the plant multiplied by solar insulation. Right? So, we can write T as well here because this is instantaneous if we talk about say daily then we have to integrate over the days and if we are talk about yearly then we have to integrate over the 365 days. Okay? So, we can multiply with 100 as well that will give you percentage inefficiency or efficiency percentage this is B and uh, instantaneous AC side yield will be something like P A C P S T C. This is under standard test condition. Okay, this is C. And also we are interested about yearly energy yield. So, it can be represented something like E AC side then yearly is something like integration of 365 days then P AC 
then d t okay. and this will be in terms of what hour per year this will be the unit and we can write this equation as d right. So, we have instantaneous power output on the AC side then system efficiency we have then instantaneous AC side yield then yearly energy yield at the AC side. Now, we can define another important parameter which is known as annual efficiency. which is nothing but E A C yearly or annual then E I annual this is for system multiplied by 100. So, this will be like equation number E. So, what is this term? This is the solar radiation incident on the PV system. throughout the year. Right. So, this will give you annual efficiency and this can be expressed as total area integration of 365 days radiation this is I m d t this may be equation number f. Also we are interested about yearly electricity yield. which is represented by y e is equal to yearly AC side energy to the total number of modules that may be know we can write number of modules in series number of nodules in parallel multiplied by p s t c this may be equation number g and this is expressed in watt hour to the kilowatt peak and this will be in yearly basis. Okay. So, now if the yearly energy yield is exceeding the annual load the system is well designed otherwise another iteration has to be performed to scale up the system or to investigate its feasibility right. So, this is important right because we can define this load yearly load is something like integration of 365 days then P L indicates the load then D T. Okay. right. So, this yearly energy yield if we say E y has to be greater than something ok. Then it is ok our design is ok we can go forward for calculation of other parameters. Now, let us discuss other performance parameters like capacity utilization factor. So, how do you define capacity utilization factor? 
in short we call it as CUF is defined as the ratio of actual annual energy generated by the PV system to the amount of energy the PV system would generate if it is operated at full rated power for 24 hours per day for a year. So, mathematically it can be expressed as yearly energy yield at the AC side to the PV rated multiplied by 24 into 365 days. Okay? And already we know what is yearly energy yield at the AC side is annual AC energy output which is represented in kilowatt hour and PV rated is the rated PV power which is also represented in kilowatt hour. Now, what it indicates once we have this information about capacity utilization factor, the capacity utilization factor of a grid connected PV system is also represented by peak sun hours per day to 24 hours per day. So, if a system delivers full rated power continuously, its capacity utilization factor will be unity or 100 percent. The CUF is dependent on the location of the PV systems. So, higher the capacity utilization factor better is the PV system. So, our target is to get a value of PV system close to unity, then we can say our plant is working perfectly. The capacity utilization factor for all rooftop solar PV system in India is varies from 16 to 17 percent. Okay? So, it is a low value. right? Now, we are concerned about energy losses. What are the two different losses involved in the solar grid connected PV system design? First is array capture loss and second one is the miscellaneous loss. Okay? So, this array capture loss or losses arises from two different sources like thermal capture loss and miscellaneous capture loss. It tells about the inability of the array to fully utilize the available irradiance. Right? That is how we can write the expression of L A which indicate the array capture losses which is equal to y r to y a mathematically h t by h r minus e d c to the p p v rated. Okay? So, it tells about the array capture losses. Okay? That means, we are losing some kind of irradiance which cannot be converted fully for electricity generation. And second component is system losses. This system loss is due to conversion of DC power output from PV to AC by inverter. How we can write this expression? It is E D C to P P V rated minus E A C to P V rated. So, this losses is taking care this inverter losses. right? So, now let us consider a situation where we have 16 modules of rated capacity 300 watt peak each okay? and we will consider different situations and we will try to analyze the performance of a plant. So, first let us consider the derating of the modules. So, once we buy a solar module of 
any rated capacity it may be 160, it may be 200, it may be 300 watt peak. So, watt peak means at peak sun hours we will get that much of 300 watt, but this is not always visible because when it is certified under standard test condition then only it specifies that if we conduct our experiments at those conditions you are expected to get rated power output. But when solar modules are installed on field then there are different situation arises, then ambience is different, the working temperature will be different, solar insulation will be different and then on the top of it manufacturing tolerance will be there and then dirt and other material will be accumulated on the solar PV modules. So, all the components need to be considered in a actual situation. So, now we are concerned about the rating of the modules. Primarily it involves three components manufacturer tolerance, dirt and dust and then temperature. Let us discuss one by one for manufacturer tolerance the output of a PV module is specified in watts and with a manufacturing tolerance based on a cell temperature of 25 degree Celsius. Assuming the tolerance is 5 percent the adjusted output of the 300 watt peak what we have considered as the module rating is therefore, 285 or 5 percent loss from the rated watt. Okay. That means, 300 multiplied by 95 percent 95 by 100 that means, so what we will get is 285 watt. So, we have started with 300 watt peak what we are getting is 285 watt for manufacturer tolerance. In the second situation say dart will accumulate over the PV modules. So, dart and dust can accumulate on the solar module surface and blocking some of the sunlight and reducing PV output. And also the sand and dust can cause erosion of the PV surface which affect the systems running performance. And if we consider the already deleted module that is 285 because of the manufacturer tolerance multiplied by we have 5 percent is responsible for dirt and dust. So, then again it will be 95 percent. So, if we count it, it will be 270.75 watt. Okay. If we consider temperature, then we will see for every degree increase in temperature from the standard test condition, there is a decrease in efficiency of the solar modules that we should keep in mind. That means, output power of PV system reduces as the module temperature decreases. The losses due to temperature is based on the temperature coefficient. right? So, since we have considered 300 watt peak rated polycrystalline module and the rating is say 0.5 percent per degree increase in temperature. right? Then if we consider ambient temperature of 28 degree Celsius and NOCT is 47 degree Celsius, then by using this expression we can find out what is the operating temperature of the cell. Then if we do this then it is found to be 55 minus 25 it is 30 degree that means 
T operating minus T S T C is 30 degree, right? So, delta T is 30 degree. So, that is how 30 multiplied by 0 0.5 it will be 15 percent losses. So, if we consider this 15 percent losses along with the other two losses it will be like 270.75 multiplied by 0 0.85 which is calculated to be 230.14 watt. Okay? Let us understand that we have started with 300 watt peak now we are here at 230. So, almost 70 watt has been lost while considering only three parameters manufacturer tolerances dirt and dust and temperature. By combining the deleted power output will be like module power under standard test condition is 300, then deleted or deleting due to manufacturer tolerance is 0.95, then deleting due to dirt is 0.95 again and deleting due to temperature is 0.85. So, it is 230.14 watt. Now, we are interested about DC energy output from the array. So, as I said there were 16 modules. Okay? So, this can be calculated by deleted output power of the module multiplied by number of modules and irradiation for the tilt and azimuth angle of the array. So, here peak sun hour is 5 we have considered while doing so and considering in the calculation it is found to be something like this 230.14 multiplied by 16 modules multiplied by 5 is the peak sun hours which is equal to 18411 watt hour. You can have a note like solar irradiation is typically provided as kilowatt hour per meter square. However, it can be stated as daily peak sun hours in short it is PSH. This is the equivalent number of hours of solar irradiance of 1 kilowatt hour per meter square. So, that is how we can say it is if we multiply 5 year. So, it will be 5 kilowatt hour per meter square. Now, DC system losses. So, if we consider the system loss is about 3 percent, then we can use the earlier data, the output what we got before the DC system loss calculation, it was 18411 multiplied by 0 0.97. So, it is 1785.87 watt hour. Then we will move to inverter because we will have solar modules first, then we have DC cable, then we have inverter, then we have AC cable. Okay? Then it goes to the grid. Right? So, DC energy delivered to the input of the inverter will be further reduced by the power or energy loss in the inverter. So, if we consider the efficiency of the inverter is 96 percent, then the AC energy delivered from the output of the inverter will be 17858.67 multiplied by 0 0.96. This was the value till this point. Okay? So, this is the value here when we have considered the efficiency of the inverter is 96 percent, cable is 3 percent. Okay? So, now AC cable here we need to consider the losses of AC cables. So, AC system losses. So, again AC system output of the inverter will be further reduced by power losses in the cables which is AC cables and normally this is connected from inverter to the grid. So, if we consider the AC cable loss is 1 percent 
that is subsystem efficiency of 99 percent, the AC energy from the inverter that will be delivered to the grid will be 17144.32 multiplied by 0.99. So, this is the value which is to be delivered to the grid. Now, we are interested about specific energy yield. Specific energy yield can be expressed something like system energy output this is yearly to the power at the standard test condition. So, we have an area of 16 modules and its rating is 300 watt peak. So, that is how we can calculate P area STC will be 16 multiplied by 300 which is equal to 4800 watt peak. And the average daily AC output that was delivered by the array to the grid what we have calculated it is something like 16.973 kilowatt hour. And over a period of one year the energy yield of solar array is about 6195.14 kilowatt hour per year. Okay? And that is how we can calculate specific energy yield will be something like this value divided by 4.8 which will be in kilowatt peak okay? and this is found to be 1290.65 kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak and this is called specific energy yield. Now, we need to find out ideal energy which is determined by using this power under standard test condition multiplied by H tilt. So, H tilt is the yearly average daily irradiation which is represented in kilowatt hour per meter square for the specific tilt angle and P area STC is the rated output power of the area under standard test condition and it is represented in watt. So, if we continue with the same example then we can find out the yearly irradiation which is equal to 1825 kilowatt hour per meter square. Here peak sun hour is 1825 okay? and P area STC already you have calculated it is 4800 watt peak and by using this we can find out what is ideal energy from the array which is nothing but 8760 kilowatt hour. Now, we have to find out performance ratio. Performance ratio is used to assess the installation quality. Higher the performance ratio better is the quality that means, we have reduced so much of losses. For example, if we estimate a performance ratio of say 85 that means, we have losses is about 15 percent which is a very good design. So, in this case let us analyze what could be the performance ratio because this performance ratio is a reflection of the system losses. So, it is represented by E system of course, it is yearly and the energy ideal energy it is also yearly. Okay? So, already we have calculated the values the actual energy yield which is on annual basis is found to be 6195.14 kilowatt hour per year and the ideal energy output of the array is 8760 kilowatt hour per year. And if we substitute these values in the expression then 
it is found to be about 0.71. That means losses is about 29 percent. That means 1 minus 0.71 is like 0.29 and in percentage it is 29 percent losses are exist in our problem what we have considered in this discussion. So, that is why it is mentioned the system loss is 29 percent. Now, we are also interested about average system efficiency and CUF. So, average system efficiency we know how it is calculated yearly AC output if we know and then amount of radiation is falling and then total area of the plant then it is found to be about 10 percent and CUF that is capacity utilization factor if we calculate it is found to be about 14.73 percent. So, these are the steps by which we can calculate all those important aspects which characterize the performance of a grid connected solar PV system. So, in summary we can write like we have studied systematically the performance of a grid connected PV system and also we have discussed one example to demonstrate how these parameters like energy yield, specific yield, performance ratio, capacity utilization factor and average system efficiency of a grid connected PV system are calculated. Hope you have enjoyed this lecture. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.